hydrogen fuel cell takes hydrogen gas, which we put on board on the vehicle, and then it takes oxygen out of the air. And by putting the two together inside the stack, it goes through a direct energy conversion where we make electricity, and there's no emission other than water coming out the other side of the stack. So we're not capturing on this vehicle, but it is possible for us to actually take the exhaust gas from the engine or the fuel cell and actually create potable water. So the soldiers can actually create their own drinking water as they're operating the vehicle. From a military standpoint, like what's the advantage of something like a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle over you know, a regular diesel powered truck? So there's quite a few advantages, you know, uh, first and foremost is it's a very, very quiet vehicle. Um, so a lot of our operators are concerned about their signature, uh, both acoustic and thermal. Um, so the vehicle operates very quietly in mobility as well as when it's doing an off-board power generation. Um, the thermal signature is also a lot quieter. We don't need much hydrogen because the system doesn't waste a lot of energy in the form of heat. It actually converts most of its energy directly to electricity to power the vehicle. So that's a very good thing. You don't need more than about five or six kilograms of hydrogen on board the vehicle and you can get a two or three hundred mile range vehicle out of that. And in about three minutes we can fill it up with hydrogen and you can be back on the road with full range. And is this way more expensive, I would think, way more expensive than a, a diesel power truck? So this particular powertrain that the Gen Zero fuel is, uh, fuel cell is, um, however the ones that General Motors are working on um, are much lower in cost. They were able to reduce a lot of the precious metal content, um, so that will make it a lot more commercially viable for them and also reduce costs on our end.